Hello, Carrots here. Welcome to the Perfect Genetics Challenge, Generation 1, Episode 40. Here is Bill teaching his baby son, Carl, to talk. Now, I know this is Generation 1, and Bill is going to be the father of Generation 2, and his wife will be Cindy, who is the heir for the Perfect Genetics Challenge, but she's still a teen, so they haven't married yet. However, Bill was abducted by aliens. He had an alien son born to him, who is the well, the first child for Generation 2. But we can't really move on to Generation 2 yet because we haven't finished with Generation 1. And the heir is still a teen. And she won't be aging up in this episode. In episode 39, Don was abducted by aliens. And now here he is being returned home. I'm hoping that he's not pregnant because we don't have enough room in this house for more babies. Don, of course, is the father of Generation 1 of this perfect genetics challenge. And so far he's had three alien pregnancies. Little Carl is the fourth alien child born to this household, but he's Bill's child. That is Petal. She is Olivia's plant sim daughter. So everybody in the household shares the care of the newly born and the toddlers. And at the moment, little Carl is a toddler. And he's such a happy little child. And I've given him hair and a whole new outfit, but he's got all of his toddler skills to learn so far. Although he has learnt to talk. And there he is having his bottle. He's a happy child. Petal has the idea that she would like to learn alchemy. And there happens to be an alchemy station downstairs in the basement. So off she she went after giving Carl his bottle and there she is studying alchemy. We'll leave her there now. Since I banned alien abductions, we're getting more and more aliens dropping in unannounced to check out what's going on on, on the lot. I've got no idea who this one was. It's a male alien and he walked rather quickly to stand just outside the greenhouse. Stood there for a few minutes and then ran off. I don't know what he was up to. Maybe he wanted to get inside the greenhouse. He couldn't do that, of course, because all the doors are locked to everybody except members of the household. So I guess there was nothing much he could do, and so he just took off. Back indoors, the three young adults, Bill, Chaz and Prue, are preparing themselves for their future life in this story. Of course, Chaz and Prue have got an urgent need to learn as much as possible because they're going to move out and live by themselves very soon. Bill's little son is working on his toddler skills. Here he is playing the xylophone. Once he's learnt that, of course, he'll be onto the peg box. He must be teething. And now he's done the xylophone, even after chewing it, he is working on the peg box. No, no, no! Oh no! Don's pregnant again! This will be the fourth alien baby for him. That'd be five altogether. Don got a desire to learn the mixology skill while he's pregnant. That's the bar that I added for their party they had in the last episode. It's from the Katy Perry Sweet Treats. I don't think he's being very good as a mixologist. Seems to be spilling a lot. It was at this point in the game that I stopped and I thought about alien abductions and they have got to stop. I know that having space rocks can increase your chance of being abducted. I got rid of all the space rocks. I know that having a telescope can increase your chance of an alien abduction. We've never had a telescope as far as I know. I'll have to search and make sure there isn't one somewhere hidden away on the lot. And now that we've got not only Don, but four of his sons plus Bill, all aged up to young adult and all of them male and all of them fully capable of coming back from an abduction with an alien pregnancy, I decided I'd use one of my NRAS mods to see if I can put a stop to it through a mod. The mod is from NRAS, N-R-A-A-S. So I clicked on the computer to get that mod up and I chose Returner Settings General by Tunable XML, Sims 3 Gameplay Actors Systems, Alien Utils. K Abduction Base Chance I changed to zero. K Abduction Max Space Rock Bonus I changed to zero. K Abduction Space Rock Bonus I changed to zero. K Abduction Telescope Bonus I changed to zero. Now let's hope that works. With all of those changes, there should be no more alien abductions in this game. 
And while I've been going through all of that, Don has raced off to work and there he goes on his bicycle. He doesn't get time off for being pregnant, but he does get time off after the baby's born. Poor Gary, he's really struggling with his magician career. Remember in the previous episode, he auditioned for a second time to get a gig and he was granted a gig and this time he's actually managed to turn up for it. He's not very good at it. The reason I've got him in this career is twofold. Firstly, that was his wish, his lifetime wish, is to become a master magician. And secondly, I've had other games where Sims have been in this career and I've not played them. I've moved them into a household somewhere else in the world and just left them to it. And they very quickly got up to level 10 and become master magicians. So I'm pretty sure that Gary will progress in the career without any assistance from me. So I feel quite safe in giving him this career and the hope he'll achieve his lifetime wish while living in another household with his future wife once they're married, because that will be Donna. And she's a fairy and she got long curly red hair, just something a little different. So we'll leave Gary to his constant failure. He does occasionally get a trick right, but not often. It'll be interesting to see. Yep, that bloke survived. He was lucky. Back at home, I came across Don, all singed, pregnant, and building a snowman outside while it's snowing. That's a sight to see. Poor Don. Taking him forever to get his lifetime wish of celebrated five-star chef. He's up to about level eight in his culinary career at the moment, but he keeps getting interrupted with all these pregnancies. Every time he has another alien baby, he's got to take about a week off work and it stops him from progressing. I don't know if he's ever going to achieve his lifetime wish. And to compound his problems, it wasn't just his own pregnancies that held back his career. Every time Olivia had a baby, Don stayed home after it was born and looked after it, while Olivia went back to work. And she's been a five-star chef for ages now, and it wasn't even her lifetime wish. All she ever wanted to do was become a culinary librarian. But there she was, every time she had another baby, she'd just pop straight back to work and keep on her climb to the top of the culinary career. While poor Don, who'd wanted to be a celebrated five-star chef, had to keep missing out and staying home and taking care of the babies each time they had one. And as a result, he's still got quite a way to go before he finally gets his lifetime wish of celebrated five-star chef. But at least they've got the fridge that Olivia managed to get. As Don goes upstairs to go to have a, a shower in their ensuite bathroom. We see Olivia is still in her career outfit teaching little Carl how to walk. She must have carried him upstairs from the nursery to do this. I'm thinking about taking Olivia out of that career because she's not doing very well at it now that she's got to level 10 and is the boss. She only goes to work one or two days a week and her work performance is pretty poor. Don't want her to get demoted. She might as well just resign and go find something else to do. After having, after having his shower, Don just came down to the kitchen and stood there thinking while Olivia carried little Carl back to the nursery after he completed learning to walk. At least Don's happy. And Olivia, of course, ends up with a negative moodlet for having contact with a child. And so she pulls a face. She does that quite a lot. That's about the only reaction she has to that moodlet. She still does everything she has to do with the children. Don soon busied himself with building snowmen. I was hoping he would learn to build something different, but he continually just built the classic snowmen. That's one of the townies bouncing on the trampoline. Shouldn't be in the yard. Percy taught little Carl how to potty and the fact that it took him two or three goes before Carl finally learnt that skill had finally convinced me that that green flame does not increase the skill gain speed. In Donna's save there was obviously a bug and her toddlers in her save were all learning to potty with only one attempt for each of the toddlers while that green flame was flowing, was there. But in this save that green flame only attracts the townies. It took little Carl just as long to learn to potty as he would have taken if he had not had the green flame outside helping him. But it is related to a skill gain because if somebody went out there and pulled the lever of doom then they'd get the hive mind and that would give them the skill gain of two to three times. Now I'm trying to get 
Prue and Chaz out of the house and Prue wants to complete her lifetime wish which is renaissance sim and I've decided the second skill she's going to get to level 10 is cooking and the quickest way for her to get to level 10 in cooking is to go to the library and read books on cooking and James is learning a skill as well and that's why he's there with her they're both reading skill books I think James is learning the handiness skill Bill is back at home and he has been pestering me for sim weeks now. He wants to get some massive score in Wacker Gnome. And finally I've told him, okay, if you must, go do it. And he's trying, but he's not doing so well. So I think he might be going to be doing this quite often if he just stops asking to do it. I think it's about 25 or 30,000 points he wants to get. He's got up to about 12,000 on one go, but it's not cumulative by the look of it, which is sad. Looks like Don's getting bigger. He's got his backward pregnancy walk going. It's Cosmo there in the yellow t-shirt, just standing there wondering what to do next by the look of it. Don must be about to go to work. He's just changed into his work outfit. So this looks like a little Martin riding a spring rider out in the background. Yes, Don just expanded. Every time that green glow happens, he becomes a little bit bigger. The pregnancy has advanced a little bit more. So Carl's done all of his toddler skills, now he's got to read his books. So we'll keep him busy reading books and when he's finished all of his books, well then we'll age him up to child. Chaz is in a bit of a dilemma. He's waiting to marry Peru, but she won't marry him until she's got her lifetime wish. And in the meantime, he's got that opportunity to deliver 10 outstanding cheeses to learn how to plant something else. And those cheese plants are taking a, such a long time to mature. They've almost matured now, but they have to be mature for quite a while before they are ready to harvest. And he knows he's going to have to plant them again at least once, maybe twice, before they get to be a high enough quality for him to use to complete his opportunity. So in the meantime, he's learning the alchemy skill and making an elixir right now. He is a level 10 gardener and in some desperation, he used up quite a few of his life fruit to fertilize his cheese plants in the hope that they are outstanding quality during the first harvest. Who, of course, has marriage on her mind as well but she does want to complete her lifetime wish. Fortunately, somebody has added a third basement room to their lot and there's a wishing well down there. Prue's completed two of the three skills that she needed to get to level 10 to complete her lifetime wish. She's got to level 10 in gardening and cooking so far and she's already at level four in fishing. So she decided that that will be her third skill. And once she gets to level 10 in fishing, she will be free to move out with her most favorite sim, Chaz. This room is mysteriously getting decorated slowly. Chaz has done what he needed to do on the alchemy station. He's come down to warm himself beside the fire. It's so cold outside. It's snowing and all the ponds and rivers are frozen solid. So there is no way that Prue could fish outside. She's got to use the wishing well to work on her fishing skill. And so she's going to be fishing now until she gets to level 10 in that skill. Cosmo wandered down to see how Prue was going with her fishing skill and he was cheering her on quite happily. Meanwhile, Chaz decided it was time to leave he was warm enough and he needed to make some more elixirs so he went off to the elixir station to have another go at the alchemy skill. It took Cosmo no time at all to work out that there's an empty chair over there near the fire so he left Prue to her fishing and sat down in front of the fire to get warm. Chaz was soon busy making more elixirs. Don was getting huge and he was happily chasing his little son Martin around in the snow with his backward pregnancy lean. Soon Martin ran off to play with some of the playground equipment and Don noticed that Olivia was standing there near the swings and he'd had a desire to give her a kiss quite a while now and he decided that this was his opportunity and he'd better grab it. Funny thing is, Olivia had been wishing to kiss Don so they were both very happy with the encounter. Aren't those hills pretty in the background with all the snow? There's a bit of flirting going on now there by the look of it. They, of course, are the parents of Generation 1. Olivia's the founder and Don is the father of her children. 
Somewhat later, that now familiar feeling came over Don. He'd got absolutely enormous and he was just standing there waiting for the moment to arrive when his fourth alien baby would enter the world. That was little Bart that just walked through the door, by the way. He's going outside to play in the playground equipment. He is Martin's imaginary friend made real. Martin's out there somewhere playing in the snow. Looks like the baby might be coming. Got all that green glow going on. Not yet, apparently. Oops, I spoke too soon. And it's a boy, again. I think I'll call him Sonny to celebrate the fact that he's been born in the middle of winter. Not sure what I'm going to do with all these aliens. They'll probably move out when they get old enough. Here it is. Trish is ignoring him completely. She just wants food. There he is, the baby boy called Sonny. He's lost all his extra weight. He's going to play with his little boy. That's good. Happy gives him a bottle. Yes, there's the bottle. Maybe this one will be a sunny-tempered little chap, just like Carl. But somehow, I don't think so. This one's got Don for a father. The only one that's been a pleasant baby to have in the house so far was little Carl, and he had Bill for a father. Party time again. This is a gift-giving party. Unfortunately, the gift pile never showed up, but lots of guests appeared and they brought food with them. That plate full of chocolate gnomes will go down well with some of the children, I'm sure. Bart's made his move. He's going to have one. I hope he enjoys it. Looks good. Most of the guests seem to be congregating up here in their little external party room, which opens straight out onto the snow. I've decided that they should go down to that new basement with the fire in the fireplace. That should be much more cosy and suitable for a gift-giving party. It'll be interesting to see how many townies make it down to this room. It's gradually gaining more decor and useful items for them to enjoy. This room was initially built to house the inventing table, but it was such a large room. And we needed a wishing well for Prue to be able to finally get her lifetime wish while it was still winter. She can't go fishing outdoors. So they've got a new buffet and we've moved the bar down down from upstairs. This, that's the bar that Don was using earlier up the top when he was practicing the mixology skill. This is little Martin and he has found one of the townie guests that have turned up to the party and she is his mother. So this is a mother and son get together which is quite rare when little alien babies are born into a household for them to actually get to interact with their alien mothers. That's her family tree up in the top left corner of the screen and she's also the mother of little Mary and Carl. Now that Martin's made contact with her she should be in his relationship panel and hopefully later on when I'm ready to move the three little aliens out they might be able to live with their mother. We'll see what happens. But life goes on in the household and it's another day and another party. This time it's Owen aging up to young adult. He of course is the third son. That looks like little, little Mary's been singed. She's still trying to make the potion to get her imaginary friend to turn real. She often gets singed. There's a little heir, Cindy. Now that Owen's aging up, it'll be Cindy's turn next. Blowing out the candles. I haven't made a sim for Owen to get married to yet. I don't know if I will. He's not a sim that I've played very much and I don't think I plan to play him very much in the future either. He's got some interesting traits. I tend to try to avoid playing absent-minded sims. I get a bit bored with them. But I'm going to make him really eccentric, so I've chosen to keep that outfit but give him a slightly different hair. So Owen's going to go into stylist to get a whole series of outfits. Oh, there's Trish. She just turned up a bit late for the party, Trish. Time to eat cake. Trish is Owen's imaginary friend turned real, and I'm wondering if maybe Owen and Trish will get together. But then Trish has been good friends with Cosmo all the way through, so ever since she became real. So it could get a bit complicated there. Naturally, Trish will be the next one to age up. Cosmo will still be quite a while before he gets to age up to young adult because Cindy comes next and then it'll be Petal. But when I check Trish's relationship panel, I see she's already got two romantic interests. The one she's most interested in happens to be Owen, and the other one is a townie called Keith Bateman. I haven't even seen those two together. 
together. And apparently she's been getting to know Keith Bateman in the background without my knowing about it. So we'll see. As I said, Trish could get a bit complicated. But she's still got to have her cake. Owen's another one who wants to become a master acrobat as, as his lifetime wish. So he will be joining the acrobat career. And I'll give him a slightly eccentric type of wardrobe, I think, to make him an interesting character to see around town. Because he'll mostly be a townie. It's time for Trish to have her cake now. She's about to age up to young adult because it's her turn now because she is the imaginary friend of Owen. And Owen's just had his aging up party. There's Gary and James and Bart helping her celebrate. I'm sure there'll be more of them there shortly. Oh, there's Chaz. He's leaving. I know he's not. He's just going around the chairs. Almost back to exactly where he was before he started. They're all getting tired. I think it's pretty close to midnight. So she may end up having her birthday in the next day after Owen because we waited a bit too long. Now the candles have been blown out. As you can see in the background there, I've given them a kitchen sink because the tables there, I thought I'd get them to wash their dishes close to where they were eating rather than having to all file up the spiral staircase to get upstairs to wash their dishes. Here she goes. Now Trish is a young adult. As Owen, he just made it in time to see her transform. This petal and Mary's had a shower so she's no longer singed. I thought everybody would turn up eventually. Some of them were in their pyjamas. Considering it's about midnight or a bit later, not surprising that some of them have already been in bed and had to get out again to come and help Trish celebrate. She could keep that outfit, I think it looks good on her, but she'll get lots of alternative. The latecomers are all too busy squealing and clapping and cheering and spinning their noise makers to grab the pieces of cake that are left. I think they're going to miss out. Yes, that lot aren't getting any cake from Trish. Then they probably had plenty of cake already when Owen had his cake, which was just a few minutes ago. I always have the imaginary friend age up just immediately after any of the Sims who were born in game age up. But I think Trish is on the next day, so she could always end up being a day younger than Owen. So Bill, he's gone out to the group science project and Trish has come out to watch him. Now this is going to be interesting. That is Owen arriving as well. Now what's going to happen here? We've got the green flame and we're going to pull the lever of doom and he's been pulled and look the sparkly bits all around their heads. That tells me and you that they've now got the hive mind and when they've got the hive mind it lasts for six hours. There is a limit and during that six hour period their skill gain goes up by two or three times. So this is the result of the lever of doom being pulled while there's a green flame. And I'm really hoping that this means that Prue's fishing skill is going to improve faster. She can fish for the whole six hours that they've got the increased speed of skill gain. But I don't know if they've got to start their skill gain after they get the hive mind because she's still fishing from before the hive mind appeared and it may be that she doesn't get any benefit of it unless she stops and starts again. Who knows? I didn't stop her. She just worked through it. Olivia went into the next room to work on the science machine which is of no relevance to her skill gain because she's already at level 10 in the science skill. Mary, Bart and Martin all went upstairs to work on their blocks table. They'll soon be aging up to teens. Martin will be the first one to age up of the three of them. I'm thinking next time we get the hive mind going, things are going to have to be better organized. So everybody who needs to learn a skill will actually be working on that skill rather than just sitting around. We've got Trish and Owen though, they're working on their gardening skills. So hopefully they'll gain plenty of that for the time that's left for the hive mind. Just behind Owen, if you look carefully at some of those harvestables, they're death flower plants with little death flowers growing on them. You can see their faces. Time's up, the hive mind is gone. So now they're back to doing things at the normal speed. Olivia's headed off to the festival to read in peace. It's still snowing. It's not quite the end of winter yet, but it will be soon. After he'd done some gardening, Owen got an opportunity to deliver some harvestables to Sophie Rogers 
letters. So he set off, had some difficulty tracking it down because she was at the school, but eventually she went home and he followed her there and managed to deliver the harvestables. Now when he got inside Sophie's house, I noticed that there were those small round dark patches on her floor, which told me that those tiles were unusable and the reason they were unusable was there was food on them and the food had sunk through the floor. You see those two dark spots on the wood floor? That's a little toddler's head there wiggling around near the light and the dark spots are on each side of that toddler's head. So I was trying to work out how to get rid of them and I couldn't, I wasn't game to use debug enabler and do radius purge because I could have ended up deleting a sim or some of her furniture. So what I did do, you can see that apple floating, I used debug enabler and I moved it upwards. So it's no longer under the floorboards but it's still got its dark shadow hanging above it. That's just a bit of trivia, just proving that those dark spots are really food. There you go. Not part of the story, just a bit of interest. They just need to be deleted now but I won't be deleting them, I'll just leave them float. So in the end, I didn't do much to help her with her sunken food problem, but Owen did complete his opportunity and successfully delivered his harvestables to her. Back at home, Max and Mary are searching for the secret potion to make their imaginary friends become real. Percy needs to improve his charisma skills, so we've added a mirror to help him do that. That mirror was a, one of the mystery items from buying sim points when we used to get them from the store. It looks like Max just discovered a potion of some sort. It wasn't the one he wants though, it was the wrong colour alien visiting again. At least they're not abducting at the moment, which is good. Can't get through the gate, it's locked. Fortunately Don's just there and he recognises her and decides to let her in. After all, she is the mother of two of his children. She went out the back where she found the group Science Project and Max ran out to greet her. So now Max has met his mother. Both of the alien mothers have met and spoken with at least one of their children. This alien is the mother of Max and the baby Sunny. Both of them are Don's children. Chaz just needed to get active so he went out and upgraded something. Yes, he's already upgraded auto water before but he's doing another one. Eventually Chaz managed to pry Prue away from the fishing at the wishing well and together they had another little adventure in that scary basement of the Green Fun Park you know where, that, where they had their scary roller coaster ride in the previous episode. Chaz came across a magical garden that I didn't know he could get into but he did. He had crystal plants and fairies and weeping fairies and harvestables and gnomes, that scary doll. So he's wishing with the crystal plant, having a conversation with that crystal plant. <laughs> Imbuing it with something. Scarecrow. Tombstones. Mushrooms. There's a frozen goblin in there somewhere too. There it is. Prue's found it. But Prue has other business to attend to and after appraising a visiting cobra, she scurried off home to continue working on her fishing skill, leaving poor Chaz alone in this scary place. Fortunately, when she went home, Prue got right back to fishing in the wishing well and it wasn't long before she didn't have to fish anymore because she got a lifetime wish. Now the only thing they're waiting for is Chaz to decide if he wants to hang around to complete his opportunities. He's got to deliver 10 outstanding cheeses to the restaurant to learn how to plant steak and beef patty plants. Sadly, cheese plants take a really long time to get ready to harvest and then he'll have another opportunity to deliver some steaks, probably perfect steaks, to the restaurant to learn how to plant the 
omni plant? Does he really need to be able to plant the omni plant? Because this could take quite a long time. Chaz had a lot on his mind. And so has Prue. And since she's completed her lifetime wish, she's free to do what she chooses for a while. And she chooses to go and check out the venue for the wedding. She wants to know exactly what facilities are there. She wants nothing to go wrong on her special day. She just doesn't know when that special day is going to be. And that's what we're going to find out in a future episode. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet and would like to see the future episodes, well then it might be a good idea to subscribe. And all the likes, subs subscribers and comments made on the video are all very helpful towards the channel getting promoted to other people to watch the videos. So thank you for watching all the way to the end. Bye bye for now and happy simming.